welcome back to another episode with the Art of Football 365. This is episode 48, and uh, it's a little different look tonight. I'm recording with Gannon. He's back home from baseball. His uh, World Series trip is complete. Uh, but before that, I just want to say I'm channeling my Jeff Jeff Cavanaugh look today on the podcast. Fired up, Dallas Cowboys, the NFL. It's getting moving, coming fast. We got around 95 days, 96 days till kickoff. Dax full go for training camp. Dax I saw today. I'm, I'm locked in. Training camp's coming up. Uh, the media has been able to start posting videos of mm-hmm. players and all that all that fun stuff. So I'm locked in. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to watch football. It's, it's coming up. It went all year, but it feels like it's been gone forever. So, all right. So today we're going to be talking about something a little different. I'm going to be kind of interviewing Gannon uh, about his 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 season in general with baseball and uh, the World Series experience at the NAIA level and uh, pretty much just how, how that went. But before we do that, Gronk spike the subscribe button for us. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Uh, we enjoy the feedback. We enjoy talking with you guys. Uh, we got a lot coming for the summer. Uh, I released this on social media mm-hmm. earlier this week. Uh, we're going to be posting once, once, once per week this week, uh, this summer. So uh, probably we, what August, mid August, probably for the next two months, yeah. right on tap there. Probably till about August uh, when we're both back around, uh, back around school and school's rolling and nobody's working a job or nobody's playing summer baseball. So. Uh, Gannon, what's your plans for the summer? I know you're talking about summer Yeah, baseball. so I got in last night. Well, this will be, we'll be dropping this at the end of the week, but I got in on Monday night of this week and then going to be leaving Sunday morning, go to South Dakota for summer ball till probably the end of July. We'll come back. We'll probably get another episode or two recorded then before I go off to school then in August. But, yeah, it's been a crazy last couple of weeks, but it's nice to be home and see some of the people from good old Freeport, Illinois. Yeah, it's definitely going to be pretty cool. I mean, getting to see a different side of – um, the United States being yeah. able to play in, in a different area and just getting away from everything around around Illinois. I mean, Illinois is pretty flat, and pretty boring. Cornfields, yeah, boring as as many of our viewers know that. Uh, but I just want to start this off. Uh, Gannon, they obviously know where you go to school, Central Mef- Methodist University. Uh, just talk a little bit about the school and the culture. Yeah. I mean, first off, before I dive into this, I'm supposed to say thanks to everybody. There's been a lot of people sending me stuff, tagging me and stuff, posting stuff, you know, all that good stuff. I'm going to keep saying stuff again, but I just really thank everybody supported us cool because I didn't realize how many people tuned in and watched it, especially the last couple games of our World Series run that went on ESPN3 and are free for people to watch. I had family members sending me pictures and videos when I scored some runs, and it was just a cool thing to know that kind of the community is kind of backing me up and just know that I had some support that way, but no, the culture, it's the culture was already established when I came in in the fall of 2019, but it was on full effect. I think this last month as we did stuff that's never been done for our baseball program at CMU. And I think that's just it's actually going to set the culture going forward. I think even more. I think that's kind of the biggest thing of this year was all the doors that's going to open for new facilities, more gear, everything that comes with winning when you're the second place team in the nation. I think that's kind of the cool part that we accomplish is bigger than just the team right now which was the cool part to be a part of that and all that but now to have this be something that's a stepping stone for the teams <clears throat> even when I get done with school in the next two three years it's really it was really fun to be part of yeah for sure and for me personally like I'm I'm retired I'm a retired college baseball player I don't play anymore but it's still fun following the game uh, and especially for one of my best friends to be playing at a at a high level it's it's fun to to watch and, and see what everything's going on and and to see how far they can go uh, but my question for Gannon is, well, before I say that, I got a little backstory. Uh, when we were younger, we played a travel ball, Freeport Sticks. Um, we played for nine, ten years, uh, and that was our life in the summer growing up. You know, 45 plus games, uh, pretty much every summer until uh, the end when we started getting older. But there was one tournament we happened to go to in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, yeah. where, as a lot of people know, that's where they host the Division One World Series, uh, and. We were a part of that. We were able to go see some games for free just as being a part of the tournament, um, being able to meet certain players. I know Gannon met a couple players mm-hmm. there. Uh, so kind of describe the overall feeling of it being surreal, like a surreal feeling yeah. of actually playing in a World Series, although obviously it's at a different level. Yeah. But it's still you're on national television. Uh, you're on a big stage. There's fans there. Uh, what is that experience like for people that may never get there? Yeah, it's funny you say that because when I when we first got to the field and we were walking around experience everything for the first time, I thought about that back in like 2012, 2013. And 
when we were all playing there, we're like, man, we can't wait to get to college. And this is the dream. You know, obviously I don't play the division one level, but this is the closest thing we got. And a lot of division one players played in this tournament that were at their previous schools. But besides that, it was just like almost like a dream come true. I don't think it's really totally set in yet of what we did. It's just kind of like we're just trying to catch up on our sleep and all that right now from being jet lag and traveling. But just walking in for the first time, it was breathtaking. And all you could do is kind of just look at your coaches and teammates and smile and be like, we say it because it's in Lewiston, Idaho is the World Series. And the word Lewiston gets passed around probably 30, 40 times a day at practice in the weight room. That's the end goal, obviously, for everybody to be the last team standing. And yeah. to get there before we even got to play the games, it was insane just to have the batting practice, have an official team practice there, all the media stuff. You know, you got special access just because you're a player. The little free little gift stuff that they gave us or just memorabilia stuff that you're going to hold on to for forever. And that's just all culmination of not even playing on the field, just getting there and let alone almost going and winning it and losing in the championship game. Yeah, well, it's obviously got to be an incredible experience. And I think it's cool that we're doing this episode right here because, I mean, hopefully if YouTube's a, still a thing yeah. down the road. Go back to, and watch yeah, it. Yeah, 30 to 50 years from now, you can sit here and we're going to see our young faces um, and just be like, wow. Like we sat here and talked about Gannon Ruckman playing at, at a World Series uh, in Lewiston, and now he gets to go back and watch that, and mm -hmm. I think that's that's pretty dope. And that's why I kind of want to do this episode is just be able to to have this episode so Gannon can look back and for other athletes that are that are chasing their dreams and and uh, have a goal of playing at mm -hmm. a big stage. Uh, Gannon's an example of it. He's been there. He, he's been a part of it. Uh, he's seen what it seen what it looks like. He's seen what it takes to have to win it all. I mean, they finished second. Mm -hmm. uh, so the team you played, uh, talk about the yeah, team you played. Yeah, um, there's a couple points. Yeah, it definitely was, I think, the biggest thing that I know. When we got beat, I took a picture of the scoreboard that had Georgia Gwinnett was the team that we played in national champs. And I know a couple – I sent a couple of my teammates that are returning players next year, and we put that as our <laughs> – wallpaper because it's just a motivation for the next year you know mm -hmm. Jalen Hurts kind of started that with the with Alabama losing the national championship three four years ago but that was just the motivation because that game was so tough our national championship game we were we were fighting and clawing to stay in the game and it ended up being an 8-4 score and we probably left 10 guys on base so that was just that close but you got to tip your cap to Georgia Gwinnett they've been a perennial powerhouse they probably have the best facility in the NAI baseball if not rival in a lot of D1 schools they have a really good playing surface down in Southern Georgia where they're located, but they just, just to culminate their team, their closer came in and he was throwing 94 to 97, a six, seven dude straight over the top. And we're working AB. There just wasn't our day, that type of, and that type of game. And I mean, Bryce understands that anybody that knows baseball, we put a lot of balls in play that right at people or they were just foul and they would have balls that would drop in and it'd just be like the baseball guys just aren't on your side that mm -hmm. day. And it wasn't meant to be, but, it's definitely fun. I have three more years left and the feeling of we're going to be back every year is setting in and we're going to make this a dynasty where we want to get there every year. And that's going to be our standard that we hold ourselves to. Yeah. And I, I kind of like what you just said. You said we're going to be there every year uh, and you got a couple of years left. What is what in a sense, how do you know you're going to be back there? What does it take as an athlete I think to say that? I th what I was thinking about today, because I knew we were talking about doing this episode, and the biggest thing that just has hit me is the raw emotion, like especially when we lost. Like I don't play a ton, and there's a lot of old, older guys that are seniors, fifth-year seniors, six-year seniors, you know, that got the opportunity with COVID to come back and just have mm -hmm. have that culmination in their career end there, which obviously we would have liked for them to end it with a national championship and get a ring out of it. But that was the raw emotion of just – I know the players that have been here for – that were already at school for a while, all their former teammates that didn't get there. So now we're going to use that as a motivation for the teammates that didn't get to win it to now go win it for those guys. And I know it's just – it's going to be slammed down our throats even more by the coaches in the fall, but that's all we want because we were within one more day of being national champs, and that's the cool feeling with this. It, it's so far yet so close knowing that you're the final two teams. Yeah, and you, you mentioned how there's there's fifth year seniors, there's kind of even sixth year guys with recruiting with COVID. Uh, kind of, I want to ask you like, because uh, I don't really even know the answer to yeah. it. Uh, for recruiting this past year, uh, was uh, did NAIA allow more roster spots on on the team this year? Yeah, so coming back, it was kind of like the same thing as the D one where there was the roster. There's not official roster cap. We had to cut down to 25 for a roster because okay. we were carrying – we carried more guys than normal. We were usually around 28, 30, and we were like 33, 34 because we just didn't know with people getting into quarantine, we wanted to be able to play games if yeah. a guy at a position went down just to have enough guys. But 
thankfully we went through the whole season and I have one positive case from the last week in January going to Texas all the way until the first week of June. We didn't have anybody test positive the entire time on and off the field. So that was huge. So those were just little things that kind of added to that. But I mean, I, mean, I think that, that says a lot in the sense that you didn't have a single positive case. It's just the buy-in, man. And that's what this team and the senior set that were there when I came in two years ago, that a majority of those guys were still here that just finished up their career. I know that's going to last with me when stuff kind of gets rough that we're going to have, you know, almost 20 new guys coming in recruiting wise this year with all the seniors leaving. And it's going to have to set the tone once we get back in the fall and get ready for the 2022 run. But it's it's hard because it's it's a weird emotion with me because I'm also still I'm still, hung, you know, hanging on to the old team and that emotions with that with those guys that I've talked to and done stuff with. But I'm also really excited for the fall. I know some people that I might know might be coming down to play that those mm -hmm. types of things. There's just a lot of cool stuff. I know a lot of people now their buddies want to come in and play because everybody we're winning now and the winning is contagious. So everybody's trying to get in buddies that are playing at other schools that might not be getting their ABs or innings on the mound. And it's just going to, again, it's just everything that happened this last month with our postseason run is just only going to better the program. And that's the cool part. I mean, I could go on and talk about that. I mean, our opening round before we even went to the World Series, we won, we won, we won three and zero. We ran right through it. It's kind of like the equivalent of an NCAA regional. Mm -hmm. We never won more than one game in that in our school history. We've always lost, won the first game, lost second game. We've always gone one and two, double elimination, and got bounced. So, and then we beat one of the teams that have beaten us twice in the opening round the last couple of years in Faulkner University in the World Series. The host school in Idaho that had a lot of fans that it was it made it chaotic to play and then another team that beat the number one team in the country just to get to the World Series so we got a lot to be proud of even though we didn't ultimately get it done yeah I was when I was watching the the games uh the couple of them that were on ESPN three um I happened to watch the the game that you guys played against the team that hosts the, mm -hmm. the World Series kind of that was, that was our best game of the year yeah but why do they uh, the, the announcers were talking about it do they get an automatic bid every single year it, it's if I'm being honest with you, Bryce, it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in sports in general. They get an automatic bid directly to the World Series from the regular season just for hosting the World Series because they have they have the they have the World Series there. There's way better facilities. It, it, it's annoying, but that's why it's they're good. Don't get me wrong. They were 44 and three, I think, and the half their team was well, they division. Like a, they they like were division one team. kickbacks, yeah, yeah. but. We went through the opening round, same with the other nine teams that are out there, and then being the 10th team just got to sit at home and rest for two weeks and not play. Like, I just don't think that's fair. That's changing next year with some new rules. But that game personally was, I think, our best game of the year. We were down two starters. One guy kind of left the team. He had to deal with some personal issues. And then another guy got a concussion. He got hit in the head with a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. And he got a concussion in the second inning. So within the third – Within the first three innings, we had two starters down and two of the guys that were huge in our lineup all year. And next man up mentality, that's all we were saying that day. It was We lost the night before, and it was an elimination game, and our backs were against the wall. And we got down 3 nothing. Their big hitter hit a three-run homer off of our NAI All-American pitcher on the mound. And then next thing we know, we ended up winning 6-4, and it was 105 on the 105 for the day temp, but 115 on the field down players against the whole school. The fans were yelling at us. We got heated with some of the people in the stands. But that was just a team win, and we never – that was our message going into that game. We never <laughs> lost two games in a row all year, and we finished the season on that because we, we bounced back every time. So that was that was probably the best game that I was a part of as a team win all year. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned when you were talking throughout that uh, next man up mentality. I know that's a big thing uh, in sports throughout any sport, yep. really, men or women. If someone goes down or someone has to leave for unforeseen uh, circumstances, someone has to be able to step up, uh, and sometimes it'll work out, sometimes it won't. I mean, you're not going to have – if Patrick Mahomes goes down and you have Chad Henney come in at quarterback, you're not going to get Patrick Mahomes 2.0. You're going to get someone different. Yeah. But you still have to have that, that next man up mentality. So uh, what is that like in your in your team atmosphere? When, when, that, when something goes wrong, uh, is there a specific player on your team that kind of – rallies the troops or, or how does that work yeah i think it's a specific especially with the seniors so many guys put their life on hold this year what they could have graduated last year they did graduate and came back and just took classes you know to be eligible mm -hmm. they could have a lot of people had good job offers to leave last year but they said screw it and put their life on pause because they wanted to come back and go out in style and win it which ultimately got second but the next man up was 
unclear show for everybody in that game. Our left fielder got hit in the head with a concussion. Guy came in, he had some good ABs, worked the walk, made all the plays in the field and left. Next game for the national championship, got his first career college start at Central Methodist in the NAI World Series, and he ended up graduating. So that's how he won out. I mean, that's just what it's about. It's bigger than baseball. It's bigger than the wins and losses. And that guy was ready to go. He was one of our best players all year, but we just have that many good players. And I know the rest of the bench that didn't even get to play, everybody's ready at all times, and they trust everybody on the roster. And that was on full scene with people getting hurt and guys going down. Yeah, and I mean, for any college athletes right now or – or any high school athletes that are working on deciding if they want to play college sports or not, uh, take opportunity. Uh, take give it a try. Yeah, take take advantage of that opportunity. I know I only played two years of college baseball. Uh, I had the opportunity to continue playing at University of Wisconsin Whitewater, uh, but for me, I just I had something else in in mind, something else in my heart that was telling me to pursue something else. But those two years were huge on you. Exactly. Off the field more than on the field even. That's the yeah, biggest off, thing. The off the field thing is incredible. I mean, you're going to meet so many people. Uh, you're going to establish so many connections. Uh, you're going to be able to, to give your co your coach a call 10 years down the road and say, I need a, I need a, a, rec a letter of recommendation on a resume for a job. Uh, you build and you network through playing sports. Uh, it's, it's special. The memories will never leave you. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I just don't rush it. Don't rush it. I mean, it, it's going to come to an end fast. I mean, baseball, you're able to still kind of play slow pitch softball or, or stuff like that, but it's, it's never going to be the no. same. You it, got the certain the cap same. on yours. Yeah, especially football. I mean, this is a directed directed towards football podcast, and once football's done, you ain't getting it back. You ain't. There's no way you get it back. Two-hand touch, flag football, it's, no, you're not, you're not getting that sport back. But another thing about this World Series thing, it's got to be a real feeling to know that, like, you were on ESPN. Yeah, ESPN. Uh, that's that's something that I know Gannon and I grow up, growing yeah. up. It's that's a dream. It's a dream come true, and it was your reality for for a week and a half. Uh, spotlight was on your team. Spotlight was on all the teams there. Uh, that's special. That's that's a reality that will never leave your mind. Uh, the, those memories that you establish there are special. But uh, this is kind of funny. Uh, when you were leaving for your trip uh, for the World Series, uh, I know you had two two connecting flights, and you you were in the airport all. Oh, that was all a, that was day, a hell of a day of travel, all day and night. So, kind of describe your your route you took to. It was a lot. Lewiston. It was a lot shakier getting there than it was on the way back. We only had two flights, and it was about half the day of travel. But yeah, we flew out of St. Louis. I think at like one o'clock in the afternoon, Central Time, our time. Went out to L.A. for an hour with the connecting flight. We couldn't get off. We had to refuel. That ended up taking an hour and a half. And then we flew to Las Vegas, which was an hour flight. And we sat in the Las Vegas airport for five hours because our flight was over an hour delayed. And then we had some altercations, like minor stuff on the plane, just to get to Washington where we were flying in for the night. Got in about 2 o'clock their time, which was 4 o'clock our time. And I got up at 6 that morning. So it was almost a 24-hour day, like bus ride to bus ride, getting off and on. Mm -hmm. But it was awesome, man, because it was. I would just sit back in the airport while we were waiting for our flights and be like, "We're really doing this. Like, we're really traveling with the." I never thought I'd be flying with the prof or professionally, but with the team that I was on in my life. I mean, we yeah. we went to four or five states that a lot of people have never been to, touched down in, and we got to see stuff. And then the two-hour drive, I think, was the coolest part because we stayed in Spokane, Washington, for the night where the airport was, and then drove two hours down the border of Washington and Idaho <clears throat> and the sites. When you pull into it, I know people who have me on social media. I posted a crap ton of pictures. My camera was full. I just, I'm not going to even delete them. I went through the pictures on the plane ride. I was like, am I going to delete some of these? I was like, I'm going to have every single picture that I have when I was there because it was insane. We stayed on the mountaintop or like a valley line, you want to call it, with the sunset over our hotel. I know Bryce probably got tired of the pictures I was sending him and he was seeing on there. But well, it, all I know is when, when you sent me the picture, that uh, I, I seen it on your Snapchat story, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm yeah. sitting there like, uh, to be honest with you, if I was on that flight, I would have had to hop off and stay there for about a week. Well, the five hours we got with the delay, we actually were able – some of the guys who were of age where they were 21 got to run a few penny slots, and a couple of the guys <laughs> won a little bit of money. So, no, it was just little stuff like that you're not going to ever forget. And it was just – it's so surreal because, like, some people I knew that I talked to regularly like, what happened? You kind of went off the grid for two weeks. I was like, man, my screen time was down double on my phone. I was just there. I just wanted to soak it up as much as I can. And mm -hmm. it was a break. It really was from everything else that's going on in the world. You're there playing baseball in the World Series, and you knew it. 
everybody was honking at you. There was banners everywhere. People went into the restaurant saying good luck. Little kids coming up for autographs outside a game before and after. I mean, it just it never got old. It was just it's like when you watch the Low League World Series, it's the same excitement and thrill, but with guys that are in their twenties, it mm -hmm. it's we're all grown men playing a little kid's game. And that's Facts. that's really all sports. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Baseball, football. It just doesn't matter. And it's you just want to have that joy as long as you can. That's what we said, soak it up because it just it's gonna go quick. I'm halfway to my degree already. And it's insane just to think about mm -hmm. that. Turn, I'm turning 21 in two weeks, and you're coming up in a couple months. It's, it's full circle, but it's always good because it, it humbles you and it keeps everything that you need to more as important in your life. And I think that's the cool part. Yeah, and as as we've talked about, we you've kind of heard how the trip went. Uh, they finished second in the World Series uh, and, and, they, and came on home, and that's where we're at right now. So I know you've already had an exit meeting, Gannon, with your coaches. Uh, but to wrap this episode up, I'm going to go rapid fire with some questions at you real quick and just kind of answer them to the best of your capabilities with how the season went and and kind of your your individual mm -hmm. thoughts on it. I yep. know we've touched on the team aspect, uh, but you're a pitcher only for a, a PO for those of you baseball mm -hmm. people or non-baseball people. A PO is a pitcher only. Uh, and you didn't happen to get innings this year in mm -hmm. the spring. Uh, you ran bases. You were a pinch runner, came in and did that. Uh, so kind of describe uh, your role. What what was your role on this you team? You know, it was a, it's a really good question you said, because I didn't know my role the first month, month and a half of the season, and I knew the postseason roster was going to get cut down, and I wanted to be a part of it on the field in uniform. And I was running down the dug. I was running down the baseline one day to grab a foul ball because we would just joke with our pitchers. We'd sprint as fast as we could just to joke around and get it, and kind of our coaches were like, okay, he can move a little bit. And then – Later, I've scored almost 30 runs this season, stole some bags, and made a factor, and it felt like I was doing something with the team. And I established a role. You know, you would have told me that in January. I would have been like, oh, there's no way in hell I'm going to do that. But that was my role that I wanted, that I had on the team, and I embraced it and pushed mm -hmm. it to the full. With We're so senior heavy and experience wise with me not having a lot of experience on the mound. That's why I'm excited for summer ball. It's going to be a month and a half of just me, myself, and I playing summer ball up in the Dakotas traveling, seeing more cool stuff. And it's time to get locked in because now I've seen everything for the first full year after the COVID year, and it's time to get in and get my innings yeah. now coming in for this next season and be a guy that they can count on, not only running, but also throwing. Yeah. Before I get to this next question, I want you to pretend that you're in front of a million people right now. Okay. Yeah, you're in front of a million people, and uh, the question is asked, uh, what does it mean to buy in a role, and how do you think you impacted your team by buying into your role and not, not being the player who is – pissed off and angry about the fact that you aren't getting what you want. Uh, how do you think that impacted your team for the better by just ha being that positive well, influence? I'm going to start off. It wasn't even me that bought it. It was our whole team because that's why we got second in the nation and had our best season ever in school history because everybody bought in. People that knew that their job was there to cheer and they mm -hmm. weren't going to play a whole lot, they embraced that role because all of our guys are equal. They're, and I tell you, there's nobody on our team that just doesn't like each other. We're all friends. We all have close little – you know, inside jokes that we crack with one another. That's what how you buy in and do it. And then the roles get filled as the season goes on when your talent kind of does that. I just spoke specifically on my role, but I think that was the biggest thing that made us go. I know our coach hit on it was our relationship as a team and as a unit. We flew, we flowed as one the whole year. That's just how mm -hmm. it was. No matter if there was one guy that didn't get one inning <clears throat> on the field pitching, whatever, or a guy that was an all American, you wouldn't know it with our team because we just, we just all love each other as brothers. That's mainly what it was. No, I like that answer for sure. And now I want to ask you, uh, you're going to play summer ball. You've touched on that. Uh, what are your goals for the summer and how do you think it will impact your your uh, future playing career with Central Methodist? Yeah, it's exciting because it's summer ball and I'm going to want to win with my teammates up there that I meet, but I'm going to be selfish. And I think that's going to be the cool part about this is I'm going to be able to throw multiple times a week. You know, there's not a whole lot riding on it. Summer ball, you want to win, obviously, but there's no – school affiliation or an actual season of eligibility or any of that type of stuff so it's mainly again it's like me doing it two years ago when i went down to missouri on my own for school i'm going up to south dakota on my own for obviously a lot shorter amount of time but living with a family that i don't know it's just mm -hmm. going to make me step out of my comfort zones and i don't think i'll even grow that much on the field as i will on my own as a person and that's why i'm doing this and that's what i'm <clears> looking at <throat> That's what I'm excited for because it's not only baseball. That's the biggest thing out of all this. It's all the other baseball stuff, off the field stuff that comes along with the mm -hmm. baseball stuff. And I think that's the cool part. Yeah, and summer ball I think is definitely going to benefit you. I know I've grown up. We played together. 
I've seen what you got, and I think I need less distractions. That's yeah, the key. <laughs> uh, oh, we know, we know. <clears throat> but I think you going away for the summer, uh, doing something on your own, balling out, uh, playing the game you love. I think it's only going to benefit you. I mean, I don't think uh, you're going to get any worse. I'm not saying you're bad. <laughs> yeah, but I, I just mean training. You're not going to get any worse unless you're doing the wrong mm -hmm. things, and you're going to be you're probably going to have a great coaching staff down there, or up there, wherever the hell it's at. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's gonna help you a crap ton. Uh, but now, after after this summer, if if everything goes smooth, uh, uh, you get your innings in, uh, you, you're locked in, and you're, you're ready for fall. Uh, what's the outlook for for your individual season upcoming next year? I know you've already touched on. Uh, we want to get back to Lewiston. We want to win mm -hmm. that next year. Uh, taking pictures of the score this past past week of the game in the national championship. Mm -hmm. But what's the goal for you? I think personally, personally, I want to be a guy that's thrown on the mound come June when we're in Lewiston, <clears throat> seeing my teammates out there and people, you know, the photographers, everybody having the pictures of those guys on the mound. I'm selfish like that when mm -hmm. it comes to me having my success. I want to be a guy. You, you know, don't want to suck. No, that's the <laughs> thing. I want to be out there. Yeah. You know, that's the type of thing. Obviously, with a lot of guys coming in and new guys, I mean, I'm more stuff wise right now. I'm going to be a reliever and I understand that, but I want to be a guy that's going to be the first left handed arm out of the bullpen when mm -hmm. they need a lefty lefty strikeout and that type of stuff. And personally, it's just attack every hitter. There's just no room for walks anymore. And it's just time to get ready and just keep filling up the zone. That's all it is. I got the stuff and everybody oh, yeah. knows that. So he's I just got gotta... a fastball. He's got a knuckleball. He's got a curveball, a splitter, a two seam, a four seam, <laughs> a slider. Uh, that's about a, it. A slurve. He's got a. What's the, what's that ball you throw straight up in the air? Of Ephus and Ephus, yeah, he, he's got it all, yeah. man. I'm telling all ten. You, uh, you got about fourteen. You got pitches that haven't even been invented before. Uh, so take note, uh, Central Methodist <laughs> pitching staff. Uh, but yeah, this has been great. You know, I think it's awesome to be able to hear your story, uh, talk to you a little bit about it more as you've been gone. I haven't seen you since January, so being it's able, a, yeah, it's yeah, a good break. Being able to just sit back, relax before you have to lock back in for baseball, grind it out, uh, get ready for fall and next spring. But stay tuned. I know he's got a lot, a lot of big things coming. He's got a lot of career left. Uh, and look out for Central Methodist again in, in the NAIA conference. Uh, Cole Ludeking, if you're listening, uh, think about it, man. Think he about knows it. what he needs to do. Think about it, man. Uh, but, but, yeah, uh, I know I forgot to mention at the beginning of this episode, check out our three sponsors, Driftless Quality Wear, 312 Beef and Sausage, and Bakker Auto Group. Uh, they support the hell out of us, so support the hell out of them. Uh, without them, we'd be absolutely nowhere. Uh, so go go spend some money on them for us. We we greatly appreciate that. Uh, Jeff Cavanaugh, appreciate you for giving me this look. Uh, I'm gonna have to tweet this out and let you know that I was representing you. Uh, you probably don't have this Ezekiel Elliott T-shirt, but I know you got this. I've seen it on many 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 many. He probably has podcasts. official Nike. Oh Z yeah, he's but... got something probably a little bit more expensive. Yeah. But all right, so uh, one episode per week uh, this entire summer until about August, late August. Uh, we got a lot of things going on. Me starting work up. Uh, honestly, works more busy than – or busier. I'm not more busy. Busier. Oh, he took more time than an hour of class a day. Yeah. School's – I don't know. I School's not that bad for me. I think I'd rather take school than I, I would too. So. the real world stuff. Yeah. Uh, but working, uh, trying to plan some certain events in Freeport, Illinois, for this podcast mm -hmm. over the summer. Trying to roll out some merchandise so we can make it's some coming. money. It's coming. It'll be here. I know we've been saying it's coming since damn near November when we started this. We were already ready for T-shirts, but yeah. But uh, we're working on it. Uh, oh, also shout out Giovanni. Giovanni offered run your race. G two G O two got me the shirt just today. I had to wear it for the podcast. Check Keep him out. Check him. him out. Yeah, he's he's done a hell of a job. We had him on. Check out the episode with him. Uh, he's doing great things. Uh, I I can't explain how much of a influence and impact he's oh, made yeah. on us as individuals. Without him, we probably still wouldn't be sitting here recording. Uh, he's another A15 legend. Mm -hmm. That's impacted us for the better. But this episode will drop on Friday. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, Gronk Spike, that subscribe button. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Uh, share this episode for us. And uh, we hope to see you ne back next week. Uh, take care and go Cowboys.